Hello everyone, my name is Brian. I am a developer from Florida and today we're going to go over the project Magic 8-Bolt in Learn JavaScript. Our key concepts for today is all about control flow. Now this is very important because this will dictate the order in which your code will run and you will learn how to create conditions and run code depending on the values and situations that you want. With that being said, let's get started. Here we are in our project. Let's go right ahead and dive into step one. So it's asking us to define a variable called username and set it to an empty string. And if we want, we can put our name on it in quotation marks. We are done with step one. Let's move over to step two. So in step two, it is asking us to create a ternary expression that decides what to do if the user enters a name or not. So if we do enter our name, we want to use string interpolation to log hello Jane. Otherwise, hello will do just fine. So let's do username question mark for the ternary syntax and the first portion is true so if I did enter my name we want it to say hello and print out the value of the variable username then we use a colon for or which will be the value that is if it's false and if the string is empty and it's false we just want a simple hello <clears throat> okay now let's move over to step number three and it's asking us to create a variable called user question and telling us that the value should be a string that is what we will ask for magic eight ball You guys can ask whatever you guys want. Um, <clears throat> step number four, we're going to write a console log statement that prints out the user question. And that is completed. Let's move over to step number five, where we will generate a random number between zero and seven. And we are going to set it to a variable called random number. So let's go ahead and do that. So you can see here we have the formula that we need right here, math.floor and math the random times eight. So we use math.random to generate a number between zero and one. And then we multiply that times eight. And then once we have that number, we use math.floor in order to round it down and not get any decimal points. That way we will have a number between zero and seven with no decimal points.
Now let's move over to step number six, where we will create another new variable called 8ball. And we are going to set it to an empty string. Now for step number seven, we need to generate a control flow that takes in random number. And then it will assign the eight ball a value depending on the value of random number. So we can create either an if else statement or a switch statement. I will choose to make a switch statement. And these are the eight possibilities that we want. It is certain, it is decisively so, reply, hasty, try again, etc. So if the value of random number is zero, it will be it is certain. If it is one, it is decisively so. If it is two, reply, hasty, try again, etc., etc. So I will choose to make a switch statement will accept random number as a parameter. And then we will start building our cases. So case zero, then eight ball will equal, it is certain. And then we break. Let's move over to case one, eight ball equals, it is decisively so. and break. We're going to go ahead and complete that for the remaining cases. I already have it set up here, so I will just paste them in order to make this tutorial a little bit shorter. So as you can see, I just kept going with case number three, four, five, six, and seven. And it looks like I actually missed case two. So let me go ahead and add that right now. Okay, so now for step number eight, we will write a console log that prints out the value of magic eight ball variable. So in order to do that, we just do console log eight ball and we are done. Now here it's asking us in step nine to just run the program a few times so that we can see the random results that appear in the console. And if you want extra practice, make an if else statement instead of a switch statement. And if you made an if else statement, make a switch statement. So here we can see that we got that the outlook is not so good. Then it says my source is set snow. Don't count on it. Don't count on it. Et cetera, et cetera. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Control flow is very important to coding as it will allow you to create a lot of custom logic and make your program run only when it needs to and for things that it needs to, depending on a lot of different things that you're going to encounter. Once again, my name is Brian from Code Academy. Happy coding.